Okay, this is how I would do this request. I have created a BAQ that displays the late open POs and the same information as the standard uh, Epic or screen. I have also included a few custom characters uh, or custom, uh, custom fields from different tables. So what we want to do is replace the existing grid to pull data from our late open POs BAQ using the BAQ data view. That is the most efficient way to do it because it runs the BAQ only once per publisher. Um, the other way to do it would be to uh, subscribe to an event on the grid and basically insert a new column into that grid every single time, but that's very inefficient. So I have written the BAQ that gives me all the POs that are open and late. That is the due date is less than today. So now we go into the buyer workbench, go to our M to our base screen, and what we're trying to do is replace this grid right here uh, to pull from our BAQ. So that's pretty easy to do using uh, BAQ data view. BAQ data view uses a um, namespace called uh, LIB broadcast for publish and subscribe. So you will need to include that. And then we're going to declare a class level BAQ data view. This is going to be my BAQ data view for my late POs. Okay, and then I'm going to call a function to create my BAQ view. Okay, so in here what we're going to do is we're going to initialize our BAQ data view by giving it the BAQ we want to use. We're going to add it as a data view into our form so that we can bind the grid to it. And then we're going to subscribe it to the current buyer ID loaded uh, into the screen. So we're going to say our BAQ view late is equal to a new BAQ data view. And we pass it the name of our BAQ that we want to use. In this case, it's called late open POs. Okay, and then we're going to add that view to our transaction so that it shows up as a binding uh, for our grid. So I'm going to call it late open POs BAQ. And I'm going to pass in my view. All right, so right now there is no publish I subscribe to this, so it'll run the BAQ as is. But what we need to do is we need to subscribe it to filter the BAQ by our current buyer. All right, and the way that we do that is we set the we gotta publish um, that that particular field. So there's a field on the screen that displays the current buyer right here, uh, and that field is called uh, portal buyer ID. So we're going to publish that field, and then we're going to subscribe our view to it. And the way we do that is we create uh, an iPublisher. So that's the field that we want to publish. Now, if this was a standard screen, um, like for example, if it was order head and order num, there would already be a publisher for that um, for that field. Uh, but since this is a custom screen, this publisher probably won't exist. So we'll have to actually create it. So if it doesn't exist, we're going to tell Epicor to publish changes to that field, basically. So basically now we, because I'm pretty sure, like I said, that that publisher doesn't exist. You can run this without this code that I just wrote. Uh, so just up to here. 
Um, and in a standard screen, if you're publishing, say, order header, it might work. Uh, but in this screen, I'm pretty sure that PO total buyer ID is not being published. So you have to create your own publishing. What you're saying is transaction, please, every time there's a change in this column, public by, in the column, you know, PO total buyer ID, publish it. Okay. And then we're basically getting a hold of that publisher. And now we're going to say, okay, if we have that publisher, then we want to subscribe our BAQ view to that publisher. So we subscribe to the publisher, to the publisher, and we tell it which field that matches in our BAQ. So in this case, the field is going to be our buyer, so it'll be our it'll be our PO header buyer ID. Okay. Now this is being called the initialized custom code. So as soon as the screen opens, the initialized custom code runs, we create the BAQ view, we subscribe ch to changes to the current publisher, to the to the current buyer, and that should automatically filter our VAQ view. So, we now should have uh, a BAQ view that's functioning. However, we won't see anything yet because we haven't done one last step here, but let's just make sure it doesn't blow up. So we're gonna close it and close it and relaunch it and this time. All right, so we didn't get an error. Now there's no change here because we haven't rebound, rebound this field, but we're going to. So we're going to go into customization mode again. And now, since we have created, since we have created a new data view and added to a transaction, there's a new uh, view available to us right here, late open POBAQ. So we're going to change the binding on the grid to that late open POBAQ and hit save. And then we're going to relaunch the screen. And if everything went well, everything will look the same, but when you go over to your POs and you scroll to the right, you should see that it's now pulling the data from RBAQ. And it should behave the same way. So if I change the, the current buyer, I should see the data change here because we have that publish and subscribe uh, working. So this is how I would add a custom field to a grid. Now this only works if it's a grid that doesn't have functionality behind it. Um, so you know this grid doesn't have a lot behind it, uh, and open width and stuff like that will still work. Um, but if there was a grid that that you know you could select this and and create a new order or something like that, that may cause problems because you're changing the data. So that would still work. You would just have to make sure that all the fields are named the same as the original grid. But that's a different story. So hopefully um, this works for what you want. And then you can do the same thing for the today, this week, and future.